Hi guys. Welcome to homework six. I'm uh, kind of conflicted on how to do this, but we're gonna we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna kind of try and narrate us through this assignment. So we don't need to see me. I want you to see the assignment, and I'm gonna get down here and I'm gonna work through this and. Uh, Hopefully the explanation will help you guys. We'll also talk about this obviously in our Zoom session. So it's a team level assignment, applying the PAQ. It's a pretty long one, so hang on to your hats. And uh, the goal is using a structured interview, in this case the PAQ, a as part of the job analysis process. So it's pretty long, but it's a it's the PAQ, the position analysis questionnaire, is something that's developed. The idea for the PAQ is they send you the materials, you use it, and then you send it back to them, pay them a bunch of money, and they use it for the analysis. But I think it's instructive for us just to kind of look at the technique, right? So we're going to score the importance of job elements. That's ultimately what our goal is in this assignment. So what I want you first to do then is, for your team, pick one of the jo 10 jobs from the jobs list that we used in HW4. Uh, go through this assignment maybe before you pick a job so that you understand what you're going to need to do with that job and that might help guide your selection of which job. Now it gets a little tricky here because you're pretending in this to be incumbents for a job you may not have performed, right? If you need help understanding the job, pretend incumbents can use a uh, uh, pretend incumbents can use ONET for further information to kind of round out your knowledge of the job. As a last resort, you could actually make up an answer. Now, one thing that you might find a little complicated about this is there are three documents that are needed to support your uh, moving through this assignment. So the PAQ interview guide, right, uh, is what you use to actually conduct the interview. So the interviewers would be reading that, and you score responses using the position analysis questionnaire, right? So you have an interview guide, and then you have a questionnaire in which you score the responses. Uh, so the PAQ, uh, AQ, is the source of the detail. So the interview guide, a script that you can follow, the PAQ uh, uh, the, and I'm abbreviating these AQ, if you will, right, is, is the source of the details. So before we go on, let's take a look. And, and what you see here is we got the links, right? So I'm going to start with the interview guide. And let's bring this up. Maybe. I'd prefer not to look at my email. Uh, oh, here we go, and there we go. So, let us take a look here. This is the PAQ interview guide, and uh, obviously multiple pages, right, eight and all. And what is filled out, you fill out the position title. Uh, we don't know the salary grade necessarily. You could probably get that from ONET if you so desire, but it's not necessary. The job title, right, is what we really need just so it keeps us straight. And then describe the job principal duties and responsibilities. Uh, this can be taken from the job description if you want from ONET, but this is not really uh, a necessary part of the assignment. Here is where we get to the actual assignment, and this is your interview script. So what you're going to do is you say, what things, so the interviewer, whoever you des designate on your team as an interviewer, is going to ask then the, the faux incumbents, that is the people pretending to be the incumbents being interviewed. Uh, what things do you do related to your work? How is the information presented? What other information do you use for your job? Now notice the heading here, and, and the, the heading organizes facets of the job in logical grouping. So does this job require information input, right? So. What do you read? One form of information input requires reading, right? What other information do you need to do your job? How do you get it? In what form, right? And then rounding out items 1 through 19, or how much of your job information is given to you verbally. Now, let us go back to this, and what we're going to do is take a look at the more detailed PAQ 
questionnaire, right? So there it is, and we'll bring it up now. This one is just a tad longer. Yeah, this is 24 pages, and, and it'll really help you move through this assignment efficiently if you familiarize yourself with the three documents so you know which document to refer to at a given time. Okay, it's a structured job analysis questionnaire that can be used for analyzing job on the basis of 187 job elements that describe generic human work behaviors. So this is a, a statistical derivation, and here you go. Look, organization of the questionnaire, information input. Remember, we just looked at that on the interview sheet. Mental processes, work output, relationships with other people, job context, and other job characteristics. So let's take a look here. The first section then, written materials. Now, how are written materials defined, right? Okay, and, and it gives you an idea. These are descriptive, but it's not all inclusive. It's going to have to be tailored to the specific job that you're looking at. The response, response scale for the item, how do, how do we score it? Well, if we ask, hey, do you use written materials? And you go, no, I don't use any written materials. I don't have to do any reading for my job. Then it doesn't apply. But for many of us, like me, if you ask me as a teacher, uh, what is your relationship to written materials? Do you use written materials? I'd be like, frick, frickin' I use written materials all the time. So that would score is very substantial, right? So, and, and you can look at the instructions here. But now, let's go here and see how it is broken down. Now, on the interview sheet, remember it said 1 through 19. Well... Where are the specifics for 1 through 19? 1 through 19 is pretty global, right? In this case, 1 is written materials. 2 is quantitative materials. So you might ask me then as a teacher, right? You say, okay, so what is your relationship to written materials? And I would say, I, write, I, I use written materials all the time. I read journal articles. I read instructions for my supervisor, etc. I read student assignments. I read, 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 read. And you might then choose to score that one as a five. And now, you go on next to, and you say, okay, so to what extent do you have to interact with materials that deal with quantities or amounts, graphs, accounts, specifications, tables of numbers? And I'd say, well, you know, I, I do that quite a bit, but not nearly as much as I read. So, And then you say, okay, well, we might score that a four. That is considerable. Or maybe a three as moderate, right? And then pictorial materials. And so it goes. So on the previous interview sheet, the PAQ interview, one through 19 are specifically broken down here. You need to ask your interviewee, your incumbent, all of these questions. So this assignment, like I said, Hang on to your hats. It's a long one because you got like freaking 187 questions to ask. Some won't apply, so you just, you know, do not apply. That would be a zero. But what we're trying to do is get a picture of what the most frequent activities are in this job across these 187 items, right? Patterns are related devices, templates, stencils, visual displays. To what extent do you use that? Dials, gauges. Now look, if we were looking at an airplane pilot, right? To what extent do you engage with visual displays? Well, yeah, my cockpit has got like 112,000 dials in it that I need to read and attend to. And you would say, wow, that is like very substantial. But for me, visual displays, dials, gauges, signal lights, radar scopes, speedometers, clocks... I mean, I use a little of that. I attend to a clock when I lecture, probably, so that I know I'm on time. Uh, or if I'm videotaping lectures, uh, I attend to the visual display here on my iPad that's controlling the camera. But not that much. You know, occasionally. Might be a better measure for a teacher, but it likely is going to score very substantial for an airline pilot. And you just go on down the list, right? So here we are, uh, materials not in process, features of nature. So imagine if you're a forester. Well, they attend to features of nature to a great extent. As a teacher of psychology, features of nature, landscape, field, geological samples, I probably don't attend to it. None of that is pertinent to my job, so it would score zero. And then it moves on to non-visual uh, sources. So it might be sounds, 
and, and you know, verbal instructions, orders, requests, conversation, interview, discussion, formal meetings, that one's very high for me, especially if I'm in the classroom, right, or doing the Zoom sessions, I'm listening to what everyone says, so that one is probably very substantial or at least considerable for my job. Now, odors that workers need to smell to perform the job, isn't that an interesting one? Well, obviously, if you're a chef or if you're a sommelier, right, if you're a wine steward, then this is, like, ultimately important, but not likely important for me as a teacher. So, we have now exhausted the first section, and let's go back, right? Or is it? Did we lose it? Uh, oh, I know what I need to do. It will be here on this tab. Uh, so, that... The script here, right, the interview guide took me through 1 through 19. Ultimately, that leads me to ask these 19 questions. Then we move on to the next section, right? So the next section then will be, have you, do you ever have to read uh, legal or very small print in your job? Score that one. Notice that's a standalone question and here an information input. 20 is a... Uh, 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 to, uh, like I said, standalone. Let's look at 21 through 27. And now notice, near visual acuity has its own rating scale. And we see the questions 21 through 27 have their own rating scale. So far, visual acuity, depth perception, color perception, sound pattern recognition, sound differentiation. Many of these might not be pertinent to a psychology teacher, but might be tremendously important to a teacher of the arts. Right? You get the idea? And then we go back and forth. So you're just going to go back and forth between each of these. Now, what are you doing with the numbers that you generate? Well, we better get to that. And here's the interact form. So let's open this one up and we'll check it out. Hi Penelope. I'm going to climb up my back. So you can see we don't need to fill all of this out. What we're looking to do though is fill this out. Here's job title, sure, right? Uh, but what's important here, and notice this is to be sent to the PAQ and they're going to do the analysis. We're not doing that because we're not spending the money. But now, remember question one? What was question one? Does anyone remember? Question one, let's go back up. Question one. We said written materials, and as a teacher, I do written materials all the time, which is very substantial. So when we get to the interact form, I'm going to put a five in here. That's it, right? Now, this is, you know, in, in PDF format. So if you have problems uh, w with PDF files, what you need to do then is, is simply develop an Excel sheet. Create an Excel sheet and, and make your first column numbers 1 through 187 uh, or, uh, well, this says through, I think it's 187, this is 199. Regardless, do your, list of call, do your list of numbers in the first column and the second column would be the rating numbers. Okay, And that's all you're going to do. The, ultimately, what you're turning in is, in fact, just that Excel sheet or the PDF sheet, however you want to do it, whatever easiest for you to fill out, that is your final product. What you're really doing, though, is practicing the interview technique. How do I conduct a job analysis using the PAQ? How do I use the PAQ as a device to structure my interview of people who perform the job that is incumbents, right? So you'll just move through the script. You'll take care of uh, each item. And as you move mental processes, you see this is the, the B section. And this will be questions starting with question 36. Decision making. And, and ch take the time, right, to check out these scales because you want to apply these scales, right? And, uh, and, and so you move through decision making, uh, use of learned information, use of job related, short term memory, education. And, and note that we're trying to determine through this PAQ what are the most important qualities that someone would need to possess 
to perform the job in an exceptional manner. And this is a very systematic, organized, tried and true way to get at it. Like handling devices or tools. Forceps, uh, ladles, tongs, so you could see, wow, we might be talking about a chef, but then there's precision tools, non-precision tools. It just depends on the job. So expect that the job you select, you may have a lot of these that, hey, Penelope, that simply don't apply, and, and you're going to list that. So the idea is, what are we getting out of this? We're learning how to interview. We're learning how to use the device that structures the interview. We're learning how to score the numbers, all right? So, and then when the course assistant and I uh, go to grade this, what we can do is we can look at the job title, and then we can, we can cherry pick, right? So if your job title says uh, tightrope walker in the circus, then men here I can look and say, hey, what, what do they have in number 86? And if we're talking tightrope work, walk, walker in the circus, I'm going to suggest that you better have a five adjacent to number 86, right? Uh, so, and, and so this is the way we can check our work. Uh, notice finger manipulation, making careful finger movements such as those involved in fine assembly. Remember that? So, so it goes. You move through this. It's going to take you a while. I assume that you'll probably do, what, a Zoom session in your team to make this happen, whatever else. And I think what might be cool, let's go back to the assignment then, if I can actually find it. Oh, you see, I got all your quizzes open because I'm actually going to, uh, I got to put together a quiz for you guys. Ah, homework six, loving the PAQ. Let's finish reading the instructions. So you see, we've covered instruction four, we've been, uh, covered instruction five, about halfway through the IG instruction six, if you want, you might want to switch roles. So that might be fun at that point. You say, okay, so I've conducted the interview and uh, we're about halfway through, we're at about item 90, so let's flip. And, and, and now the interviewer becomes the interviewee, give everyone a chance. So if some scores are difficult to compute or don't seem to apply, just put the zero in. Remember, we're familiarizing ourselves with the PAQ tool and similar tools. So there you go. The assignment's loaded up. Uh, you're good to go. Uh, last page here, there is a job analysis, the PAQ job analysis manual. I, you can refer to it if you want, but I, I'm hoping these instructions are complete enough and you can ask some questions during our Zoom session, if so required. Uh, I'm afraid that once you delve into the manual, it might make it more complex than that it really needs to be. So ultimately, what are we doing is we're trying to augment our job analysis, say, wow, we have a very organized and efficient questionnaire to tap into what is done or what isn't done, and not only what is done and what isn't done, but to put a numerical uh, priority on it. So that's all I got for you guys. Uh, I know this is probably a hokey way to present it, but uh, I wanted to have the screen closer up and, and kind of fill the frame rather than my face. But I will give you my face. So goodbye, enjoy, and uh, hit me up with any questions as, as they might come available. So bye-bye.